Chain prompting is one of the most underrated and misunderstood prompting techniques that exist that can be super powerful when you use it the right way. When I was searching YouTube months ago, I was trying to look for a resource that could help me go from zero to hero and understand the nuance of how to and when to use chain prompting and I couldn't find it. So today's video is my attempt to try to give you the best breakdown of chain prompting that I could possibly give you. Like my usual videos, I'm gonna walk you through the concept of what chain prompting is and how you can apply it step by step and then we'll actually apply it in practice using some example automations in make.com. By the end of this, you'll be able to not only understand when to use chain prompting, but you'll have a few tricks up your sleeve that I'm gonna give you that will make you a prompting expert with this technique. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark and I run my own AI automation agency called Prompt Advisors for the past two years. We work with companies in all industries to see where AI fits best in their specific workflows. Before we dive into the conceptual breakdown, of what chain prompting is, I just wanna explain what it is in layman's terms so that you can follow along from the beginning of this video without having to have previous knowledge. The main idea is that you usually have one complex task that's composed of small multi-steps. And the idea with chain prompting is that you create a prompt that represents each one of these steps that each feed into one another. So the output of one prompt will become the input to the next prompt. And this way is used to try to create a better end-to-end -end result using smaller steps instead of relying on things that we've been doing so far on the channel, which is creating very large prompts to try to accomplish A to Z in one shot. Now we're gonna jump straight into the slides. I'm gonna walk you through from the most basic example of chain prompting all the way to the more complicated, bespoke techniques you probably haven't even seen before. Okay, so to start small, this is probably the most basic version of chain prompting, and you'll realize very quickly that all of you have been probably using chain prompting to a certain extent since day one of ChatGPT. If I ask ChatGPT to tell me a joke, and then it tells me a joke, and I want to do a better job, then me just saying do a better job is technically a version of chain prompting because we're taking an individual input, we're getting an output, and we're using the feedback from my input on that output for the next input. I probably had to take that five times until I got it right, but hopefully you got the concept. If not, you're gonna get it shortly. Big picture, as you're giving feedback to different outputs you're getting from ChatGPT, whether it's too long, too short, too formal, too informal, every single time you're giving that feedback, Technically, because the context of that conversation is being stored in memory while you're talking to it, you are technically chain prompting, but at a very low level and not very intentional. Now, the difference between intentional chain prompting and unintentional chain prompting is pretty vast in terms of the quality that you get when you actually try to make it very procedural. And expert tip, this little feedback here, you know you can do better than that, come on actually works with GPT really well in a lot of use cases. So just take that one and put it in your back pocket for later. Now, we talked about what chain prompting is and we just saw a very low level example, but when would you tactically want to use it? So scenario one is when you have a very bloated prompt. In our last few videos, we've been creating very large meta prompts, which for the most part can perform really, really well when your main output is pretty centralized and is very focused. But the issue is when you have a bloated prompt where you have a lot of context, multiple instructions, multiple examples for those instructions, and you do that within a few pages of a prompt and you're pushing the LLM to its limit of its context window, inevitably, you're gonna have that lost in the middle logic, which at least as of today, as of August, 2024, is still an issue with all LLMs where even if it has a million context window, there's some detail in the middle or some instruction in the middle that it will hallucinate on eventually. If you have a very complex task and you also want to reduce the likelihood of hallucination, chain prompting is a very good way to do that because you're technically making a very narrow and focused set of prompts that all are very dialed in in terms of what their output should be. And then all you're doing is you're merging the result of all of those together. This leads to the second situation that you might want to consider using chain prompting. I like to call it piecemeal pipeline, where imagine you're writing something like a YouTube script. And first you are doing some form of idea generation. 
And instead of having a mega prompt internally do that idea generation, you actually assign it to one specific prompt where you could feed it a bunch of examples of how to ideate or really good ideas that you've come up with before or you connect it with its own knowledge base. So now in a way that becomes a small mini quote unquote agent that's really good at that task. And for the next one, maybe you wanna take those ideas and create an outline from them. And now using that outline, maybe you wanna create a plan of where you wanna put your animations, your hooks, etc. So that could be your planning stage. And then you wanna take that plan and now you wanna execute part one of that plan and actually write the script for part one because we know that at least as of today, most LMs struggle to output a lot of information all at one time. And then etc. etc. you want to do part two and part three and maybe you always have as a part of your videos part one, two and three and you have enough history or examples you can feed each where when you now join these all together and each feeds to the next, now the outline is aware of your ideas and your plan is aware of your outline. And now part one is informed of plan, outline and the idea because it's all kind of encapsulated one input at a time. And the last use case I see is what I like to call progressive improvement, where maybe you start at writing a story and then you wanna change the tone of that story. And then you wanna make it slightly less formal. And then you wanna remove any bullets, especially if you're using something like ChatGPT. Maybe you wanna make it long form as soon as the tonality and the story kind of comes together. And then maybe finally you wanna say, make it sound more human-like because maybe it's using a lot of words like delve and all those robotic words that keep popping up over and over again. And this is very similar to our low level example where you're progressively aiming and shooting to get your final result. The difference here with progressive improvement is you can kind of itemize it based on the different patterns you see with LLM. So let's say that you know that GPT-40 mini isn't the best when it comes to your first draft because the tonality is off. Well, now you can actually schedule a tonality prompt to actually be in that pipeline to always fix that. The next thing is if you know that no matter what you do, it typically comes out more formal than you like it, then you can always schedule a prompt to make it less formal. So this becomes really important and helpful once you have an understanding for the rhythm of a particular LLM or a different chain of LLMs that I'll get to shortly. Regardless, chain prompting is super helpful and powerful at breaking down these complex tasks into small, very digestible stages where you can also do quality assurance per stage to see where is the issue coming from? Where is the hallucination happening? Where is quality kind of degrading where I really need to focus on that? So that being said, let's look at a few different implementations of chain prompting. So there's probably really smart technical words that I could use here, but I had to dumb everything down for myself months ago. So I'm gonna pass that on to you with the different methods that I've kind of named just so I can remember them more easily. So one, we have individual prompt chains. Two, we have what I like to call the mix and match chain. This is probably the one that you haven't seen before or experimented with, but it's super powerful if you know when to use it. The committee chain is very expensive to run, but very exhaustive. And the last one is called the cheap chain. And you'll understand why it's called that when I get there. So with individual prompt chains, this is something you've definitely seen before if you've had any exposure to chain prompting at all, which is pretty much you take the same LLM, you break it up into different steps, like we just mentioned on the last slide, and you have one LLM step feed into the next. So for mix and match chain, like I said before, it's one of my favorite to use because it's very powerful if you truly understand which large language model to use for which type of task. So let's say, for example, that you know that OpenAI is really good at brainstorming or idea generation. Then you can start with OpenAI as your first node in the chain. But maybe now you wanna actually write a long form memo and you know that something like Claude 3.5 Sonnet has a competitive advantage when it comes to that kind of writing style. Then you can throw that in as a part of the chain. And then if you actually wanna go back and summarize it or make it more succinct or slightly less formal or less technical, you can go back to OpenAI, take the output from Claude and remix it. In the same vein, you might wanna start off with a Claude 3.5 Sonnet to write a report for work. And then you wanna use a lower level LLM to just refine small punctuation, small fragments and sentences. So then you use something like Claude Instant and maybe just to make it into a summary format, you use OpenAI as that final portion. 
So that's the beauty of mixing and matching is that if you know which part of the chain should be attributed to which LM, you can be super nimble and efficient with the use of different LMs to get your dream outcome. Now the committee chain is the most expensive to actually run in production, but it's very exhaustive because it gives you a very good conclusion of which chain of uniform LLMs might get you the best result. So if we look here, we could start off with a chain of GPT LLMs, and then we go to the Anthropic Cloud Model LLMs, and finally, maybe we throw in a Gemini into the mix as well. Now, instead of having them just be purely separate chains with separate outputs, we make them converge and we assign some form of LM or an evaluator. Now, an evaluator could be some form of Python or JavaScript code that you write to look for certain elements in the actual output that would deem it better or worse. Now, if you want to use a lower level LM like a GPT 3.5 or GPT 4.0 mini to try to just go through the responses blindly, not knowing which is GPT and which is Anthropic and which is Gemini, which I'm saying for a reason, by the way, because it seems that uh, once they know that an output is from their own LM, their people, they're biased to always say that it's better than the others, no matter what. So that's the little thing we notice in production. So assuming it was a blind taste test and the LLM chose purely based on criteria, then you can use a very low level LLM to decide, hey, you know what? I think that your Gemini flow produced the best result, the best email, the best social media post based on XYZ criteria that you gave me. So it kind of acts as your LLM auditor in a way. Now the last one, the cheap chain, this is actually one of the less spoken about, but also very powerful. And if we forecast where we're heading in terms of technology in the next six to 12 months, I think that we'll have 3.5 Sonnet level LLMs almost free by this time next year. And what that means is maybe instead of the three nodes we've been having in all of these examples, what if we actually have four? What if we have seven? What if we have 10? Where even though they're slightly quote unquote dumber than the more expensive models, even if you put together and chain seven or nine of them, they accomplish a much better result at still a fraction of the cost of running one to two or three different nodes. So this has become a lot more possible with these smarter, smaller models that are way cheaper. And I think that this will continue to be more and more possible until we come to the point where we have literally Claude three Opus level LLMs for a fraction of the cost in the future where we might only need one, two, three steps, if any. No matter how smart LLMs are, I do think that there will always be some version of chain prompting in the future, even if one prompt can get you all of these different subtasks perfectly executed. Conceptually, this is it. I wanna show you an example of each one of these chains in an actual production scenario using something like a make.com. I don't usually use stuff like make or Zapier on this channel just because I've been very focused on the development, pure Python, pure prompting techniques. Uh, but I do think that I wanna create a small series about make automations and actually using them for useful tasks in everyday entrepreneur or business lives. So this is going to be a small teaser of what that might look like. So we'll hop into make right now and I'll show you what I built for this little tutorial. So if you haven't used make before, this is not going to be a make tutorial. I'm not going to walk through how to actually build these step by step. That's for a later date. This is more so just to conceptualize everything that we just went through in the slides. So pretty much all this is going to do is I have an air table that is set up here where I'm going to give an idea for a presentation. And when I click on this generate presentation button, it's going to execute every one of those chains and output the result of those chains in this table here. Like we saw before, we're going to have some input from Airtable, which is pretty much, if you're not familiar, it's a Google sheet on steroids and it will route that input to two separate chains that will then dump the results in Airtable. For the mix and match chain, we're going to go from the OpenAI GPT-4.0 to create an outline. And then we're going to go to the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet to actually create the prompt here. And then the final one, we're going to use OpenAI again to improve the presentation. In this case, we're also going to use GPT-4.0. If you're curious about my actual prompts that I'm putting in here, I didn't do anything fancy. I basically just used a very basic meta prompt to create some sample prompts that I could just use this as a demo. In this case, it says you are an intelligent presentation writer. Your job is to create a presentation outline from an idea. The outline should focus on creating a presentation that is conversational and should only talk when necessary. So, and the next one will be something like, if we go down here, 
Again, your job is to create a full presentation from an outline given. You should focus on a presentation that is conversational and should only talk when necessary. So um, same thing over and over again, very basic example. Actually writing these chain prompts, you can use my meta prompting videos that you would have seen in a couple of weeks ago to actually come up with those prompts. This is more so again, just to purely demo the process. Next, we have the more beefy committee chain where we have that same input. In this case, we're routing it to a chain of open AI prompts and then a chain of anthropic prompts and then a chain of, in this case, Gemini prompts using, I think, Gemini flash. And at the very end, we just compile everything together. We clean it all up and we throw it into the air table as one result of all three. And for the cheap chain, like we saw in that last slide, we pretty much have just four GPT-40 mini chains, each one taking on a small minute task. So one's creating the outline, one's generating the presentation, one's improving the presentation slightly, and the last one's improving the presentation with a few more tweaks. And just to pause for a second, you can see the power of chain prompting really well here, because imagine you could improve the same presentation in seven different ways. Assuming that, you know, to make a good presentation, you want to be conversational. You want it to be slightly funny. You want it to be informational. You want it to be engaging. Now imagine you'd usually take these four things and inject it in a prompt. The difference here is every single part of the chain is obsessed and dialed in to that one small task in terms of how to improve the presentation in X way. So that's where it becomes very powerful. And a lot of things in the space that are called agents, honestly, are literally just prompt chains in disguise. So just to finish things off, we're going to actually just put an idea in the air table, execute it and see it in production. So we'll go into our little prompt chaining air table here. We'll just put an idea, which is how to do prompt engineering like a champ, Ooh, not champ, champ. And then we're going to click on generate presentation. And then this is going to create a little dialogue box that says it's been triggered across all of these different chains. And if we'll see here, it's run here, it's run here. It's almost done running here. And this one's done as well. And you'll see here, we got all of the outputs. We got one from the individual chain from GPT-40, one from Claude 3.5 Sonnet and the mix and mass chain, the committee chain and the cheap chain. So for the GPT-40, very basic. It just came up with, as usual, bulleted points per slide. Yep, nothing surprising there. For Claude, as usual, Claude loves to say thank you and introduces its output always. It injects this like commentary every single time. It'll say, in this case, it's just more detailed bullets. At least it has three every time and it has some form of conclusion. For the mix and match chain, it looks like it's very different in the style actually, which is one of the beauties of chain prompting and mix and matching is you'll get a very different voice at the end because it's gone through both Claude and OpenAI. So it has a very nuanced voice. So you'll see here. Yeah, it's a bit different. Even the wrap up, the way it writes the wrap up is very different. Uh, the committee chain, in this case, it picked GPT as the best output in its run. And it seems to be a bit more detailed than our original OpenAI run from before. There we go. And the last one, the cheap chain, seems like it's actually not bad. It's bullets per slide. It's pretty structured. And I would argue it's one of the better ones, if not the best one, compared to like the succinctness and actual to the point nature of the slideshow. So again, this is just a very basic demo. This wasn't me trying actually to write a good prompt at all for any of them, but it's more so just to put everything together and conceptualize the power and the fact that chain prompting needs to be a tool that's in your toolbox. And it's something you've already been using. Just learn to use it at an expert level. If you enjoyed this video, like the other ones, please like and sub the channel. And if you want access to these make automations, I'm going to put a link to them in the description below. I'll see you next time.